So my guest today on the Theogenic Evolution podcast is Oli, and Oli is speaking with me from all the way over in Europe. Oli, welcome to the Theogenic Evolution. Yes, hello, Martin. I'm really excited to be with you. Yes, I'm really excited to have you here. Um, we actually just connected about two days ago, where you sent yeah. me an email saying that you are engaged in a new practice over in Holland, which you are calling Siliwaska. And this is something that I had never heard before. And huh. um, also, you had mentioned working with psilocybin truffles, uh, which is something that as we've We've had a little warm-up conversation here. We've discussed about how many people are not really aware that there is such a thing as psilocybin truffles out there. And so I thought it would be the perfect topic to have here in the podcast. And so we've just jumped right into it. And here we are. So, Ollie, if you would, let's just start by letting the people know what is psilocybin. What is this new process that you're engaged in? Yeah, um, uh, there is all the information on my homepage as well, psilocybin.com, as you mentioned, and um, it's uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a new kind of word creation. It's it has no ancient tradition. It's um, something that uh, no uh, tribe or no um, and there is there is no sac sacred use of it. It's a combination of psilo from psilocybin or psilocin and huasca from the ayahuasca wine. And it just means that you take a Maui, a Mao inhibiting plant, uh, together with uh, psilocybin mushrooms and psilocin, psilocybin containing mushrooms. In this case, since in the Netherlands there is a loophole in the law, we uh, use chlorotia. I would get into that as you are very interested in it, and the the listeners might be too. What is chlorotia actually is? But uh, in the Netherlands, they are sold in smart shops, and they are legal there due to this loophole they have in their law. And um, there is uh, the same compound which is in the fruit bodies as well, the psilocybin, which is actually just psilocin if you take away the phosphor group which will be taken away in your stomach mm -hmm. naturally so we are talking about the active compound psilocin which um, i usually call it overly active dmt because um, it's just a hydroxyl uh, group which is bonded to the dmt and then ta -da, you have psilocin and this is the only thing which differs it and it kind of tells your system, I'm not DMT, you don't need a Maui, I can work without. So you take the mushrooms and wow, you go, you, uh, you go off. And um, that's the whole idea is why then take a Maui with it? And um, uh, Actually, maybe first, before yeah. we could get into that, if you could just describe yeah. what this loophole is in Holland. So formally, psilocybin mushrooms were legal, they were able to be sold, but now they're not. And in its place, what we see in the smart shops are these truffles, which I myself got to encounter when I yeah. went to Holland last summer and got to munch on those a little bit as I was um, <laughs> traveling around Amsterdam and boating through the canals. And these are all sold legally. So what what is this legal loophole? So I, I assume that it's yeah. not that psilocin or psilocybin are illegal it's the fruiting bodies themselves that are illegal yeah yeah it is this strange thing all over the world that they forbade a mushroom you know that they are forbidding a mushroom like in the states too it's um in germany even spars are illegal and um in germany the law is like you know it's everything which contains these two chemical compounds psilocin and psilocybin is forbidden and in the netherlands it's like Fruit bodies, dried or fresh, are forbidden, but not the spores, not the living cultures. You can still buy grow kits in the Netherlands as well. You're just not allowed to grow them into fruit bodies because the fruit bodies are forbidden. So, but so you, 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 can you, you can buy you can buy yeah. a growing kit, but you can't actually use the growing yes. kit then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's that's law. You know, they're all they're all egos running mad. But okay, uh, anyway, it's the sclerotia are sclerotia. They are not fruit bodies, whether dried nor um, fresh. So they are sclerotia, and a sclerotia, uh, so-called philosopher's stone, 
or truffle, or yeah, there are, those are the uh, words for it, is a, a hardened mycelial structure which the mushroom forms if there is no chance to bring fruit bodies, meaning if they are in total darkness or if they are overly wet or overly dry, the mushroom brings up hardened are quite big. They can be like baseballs, up to baseballs. The the Dutch, as always, with their tulips, you know, they are, mm -hmm. and with their wheat, they are crazy, crazy breeders. So they uh, even have a, 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 a breeding which brings sclerotia big as baseballs. And uh, I guess it's called Dutch something or Amsterdam master. Or, anyway, they are just, uh, you know, they are doing selections of strains and it goes all down to three species. It's Psilocybe galindui, Psilocybe mexicana and Psilocybe tampanensis. Those three uh, mushroom species um, are forming sclerotia within the casing soil or within the substrate. It's uh, so, and those are legal because there are no fruit bodies, uh, um, not dried or fresh fruit bodies. They are just sclerotia. But uh, like the mycelium as well, those sclerotia contain psilo uh, psilocybin. Yeah, no psilocin or just almost nothing. No psilocin, but um, psilocybin. They are a bit weaker than the fruit bodies, uh, not as potent as the fruit bodies. But they contain the psilocybin, and uh, if you take them, they are orally active. But if you take them with the Maui together, you are up for a really, really intense journey. And this is psilocybin. Yeah, so how does that change the experience of working with the psilocybin if you're taking it with the monoamine oxidase inhibitor? Yeah. First of all, it lasts longer. The mushrooms themselves are kind of between five to seven hours. I mean, the seventh hour meaning you're totally down to zero. Mm -hmm. So it prolongs the um, uh, the experience up to seven to nine hours. So usually after eight to nine hours, you're back to normal again. I mean, meaning normal, not really normal. You know that from maybe your experiences. Right, right, right. After uh, such an experience, you're not normal anymore. And um, yeah, but you're sober then. Uh, and um, yeah, so nine hours is quite a long time. And yes, it is indeed. What's, what's really interesting is that, uh, I mean, maybe I tell you the story when I first encountered it. It's 10 years ago already, nine years something. And we are just bumping into it by accident or by fate, I'd rather say. Uh, we tried it in combination and we tried four grams of semilanceata, psilocybe semilanceata, a very strong psilocybe. And we tried four grams and said, oh, come on, with the four grams, there was still room for more. And we were really interested in uh, the psilocybe. Uh, actually, we were interested in ayahuasca, but we thought, oh, ayahuasca is maybe too strong for us. So we thought, hey, psilocybe, let's do that, because we read something in an in a entheogenic magazine. And um, so we thought there was a guy who took one and a half grams in Milanciata with uh, two gram Peganum Hamala. The Peganum Hamala is the Maui sauce. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, we thought, oh, what does he know? One and a half gram. He had a hell of a time in this magazine, in this article. But we thought, hey, come on, take two. Yeah, we, we did the four and we had the feeling we had we had the feeling. We can easily take more than four, or not easily, but maybe five or six. So we thought, if it doubles the potency, yeah, we are totally cool if we take two. But it, uh, that it, but it doesn't double the potency. I'd say it, it's five to six or seven times stronger with the Maui. And it has a dimension uh, which is definitely, I mean, I, I didn't take... 10 grams of semilanceata solely without Maui. But um, there is, it's very, very strong. I just can't. It, it, um, a full dose of uh, psilocybin dissolves everything. Um, I did ayahuasca as well, but I never took enough and I took much. And 
I did it even with Shipibo last year with Icaros and original Amazon ayahuasca and mm-hmm. I did my my own ayahuasca with uh, with crystals uh, and uh, pharma ayahuasca they call it so I I scaled down the um, uh, the milligrams of uh, DMT which was not le- not not uh, less and but still with the psilocybin it's you can't purge you have the mushrooms in you you have the mao in you um, actually, we taken the, the mushrooms one hour after the Maui, then the Maui is fully active. You take the peganum seeds, then one hour wait, and you have a full dose of Maui then, of Maui inhibiting. And, and then you take the mushrooms, so the mushrooms immediately start to work, and you can't purge them since the amount is so small. I mean, two grams of mushrooms, it's really not much. And so we took those and we had a night yeah sure i never forget and uh, i didn't understand it at that time it's nine years ago and i really got lost the few years after that because i i never could go back to that experience because i never would take that uh, amount again but three years ago i took uh, again the same amount of mushrooms even a bit more even a bit more semlanceata and that night i understood that it's just about letting go Yes. That at some point, at some point, the mushrooms, the psilocybin was so strong on me that I couldn't do anything else but just lie there and let go. And in that moment, when your mind realizes there's nothing else to do but lie down and let go. I mean... You know, you if you go inside and say, "I want to let go, I want to let go," that's not it. No, you're that's just not letting go at all. <laughs> you're just letting go because it's so strong, and the psilocybin is absolutely it's just the most powerful thing I've ever experienced. I still have to do five meal, but even if five meal would be stronger, and DMT smoke DMT is very very strong. No point about that. And we did Maui with smoke DMT, which is the strongest way to do it. I had it uh, up to now, but it's all time. You know, it's all it's all just in time. You have five minutes away, ten minutes. Even with Maui and smoked DMT, you are half an hour away. But if you're five hours or three or three to four hours in that place where there's nothing left, you give up. <laughs> your mind just gives up <laughs> and and that's it that's the power of psilocybin it's it's not that it's uh you know bam like the rocket the rocket uh, like you have with smoke tmt but it's just that you're there and you're staying there and you're staying there and you're staying there and then your ego says, oh, when, when it's over and it gets stronger and even stronger and at some point you realize an hour is gone and you can't even realize what is an hour and then you just let go. I, I can't, you know, there's no other way to describe but just let go. And for some egos... I mean, we are humans with an ego, so I always call the others not the others, but the other egos. So we had, uh, at the ceremony weekends we did, we had uh, a few very, very strong egos, which took large amounts, and still I wouldn't let go. And so for one participant, he came the second time to the second weekend, and he did even more, and then he he, he was letting go. And for two hours, no, not a single movement or word was heard for him. And when he then came slowly back from that place, his ego immediately started to explain what just had happened. Right, right. But it, it just, he was going over and over like, love your demons, love yourself. There is nothing but oneness and or and so on and so on. It was, was just it was beautiful mantras kind of. He was uh, like kind of chanting. And um, it's you know, whatever um, I mean it, it was uh, he was out there and he could have stayed longer, but he has this strong ego and it's so beautiful because I know 
I know him now a bit better and he's in my heart and he he knows who I'm talking about and um, I can I can assure you this guy totally changed when the first uh, weekend was he had so much anger in him he was screaming and because his ego didn't want to let go and it was oh, terrible really and everybody was feeling with him and we are family it's just not um, at the ceremonies no one is um, uh, disturbed by anyone else it's just my brother is suffering you know if I can't stand the suffering I go outside get some fresh air but if I can move around, yeah. But uh, I am taking care of everyone. I'm sober the nights. And uh, so he, he was totally letting go of anger, of fear. And those are the most biggest, the, the biggest things of the ego, fear and anger. It's what, what drives the ego through life is fear and anger. And this is the, th those are the two ones we, we just not let go. We just to, we try to suppress them and wow, 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 you know that. And yeah, and, but he totally changed. He's really been healed. I, I mean, I have to stop here because I'm taking too much question. <laughs> I'm already answering so much que questions here. I want to give you room too. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, if yeah. I could just kind of, um, jump in on a few things that you've said and maybe yeah. um, just comment on them that there's a lot of things that you're saying that I really, really like. And first is the acknowledgement that to really, truly reach that place of surrender and letting go that it really does take very, very strong entheogenic experiences to do that. And this is something that most people actually are not encountering uh, through their interaction with entheogens. And it's something that I see only very rarely happening, say, in ayahuasca circles and in ayahuasca ceremonies. And a lot of people don't really understand that, that they don't understand that to reach that place of complete and total surrender is something that kind of jumping on some of the language that you're using, it's almost like people are going to sleep where when they completely <laughs> relax and surrender, it's when they stop doing anything. Yeah. And yeah. often for a lot of people that involves a great deal of struggle and releasing, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah. before yeah. they reach that point. And that's what you see happen in a lot of ayahuasca ceremonies where people are spending a lot of time purging or they're seeking some kind of healing, <laughs> that that's actually their ego that's operating and fighting with or attempting to work with the experience that when people are still in their ego, they think that when they're working with entheogens, that there's something that they need to do or they, something that they need to accomplish. But when the actual surrender happens, it's just this complete dissolution into not needing to do anything. And one of the things that I really liked on your website, your Silawaska website is describing about how the Silawaska because it's so strong that it allows you to move into a place that you describe as being beyond thought. And I think that that's a really wonderful description where when yeah. we enter into that, what then opens yeah. up, as you've written on your website, is this feeling of universal love and just this state of unity and pure being. And then also yeah. one last comment is just um, the, the story that you were telling about this individual, how we can see that there's this very distinct transition that occurs. For one, the, the first transition is when they fall into a complete unitary state of experience. And then it's just beautiful silence and beautiful rest. The most profound rest anyone has ever had is yeah. that it occurs at that time. But then as that energy starts to wane, it's amazing the resilience of the ego that it just jumps in and all of a sudden the ego reasserts itself. And that's when people start trying to explain their experience or start, start trying to talk about their experience or communicate it. And that's always coming from a place of the ego. It's the ego that says, oh, I need to tell someone about this or I need to explain this <laughs> in yeah, some way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the ego, yeah. even when the medicine is still very strong the ego is resilient and it starts to reassert yeah, itself. Yeah. And that's when people come out of that non-dual state and they're returning back into a more normal dualistic state where they feel that communication is actually something that's fruitful. Because when you're in the non-dual state, there's no point in communicating. There's, there's no one else there in that sense. And there's no desire to communicate. It's just the desire to be. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about 
what you've seen with people of falling into this non-dual state, this complete surrender state, and then the process of people coming out of that and how that has helped to transform them and provide a very deep sense of, of healing and also a deep sense of being and belonging to those individuals. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, let me jump on in something I have I heard of on your podcasts, which uh, you said is um, that it's uh, very important that you don't only have the experience of the sacrament or entheogenic or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's that there is um, an explanation or um, something going along with it, um, so you know exactly what what really happened. Um, when when I did the Psilocybin first time nine years ago, I just came out of it after nine hours. My friend had a bad time. I uh, I was caring for him, and I I jumped on in the role of being the caretaker, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't even see this, you know. But um, no one told me what happened. And three years ago, I also discovered DMT at the same time, and I had a friend Jeroen, whom I um, make this uh, weekends together with i'm not alone as a caretaker we are two guider guide uh, guides there yeah so um it's good to have someone else and um he showed me ramdas and he showed me Eckhart Tolle, and uh, uh this helped me to understand that this voice in my head is a not me and b that i don't have to do what it tells me yes And this is something we all, I even, you know, even if you don't give people a, a sacrament, if you just tell them, hey, have you ever asked yourself if you should do, if you must do what the voice is telling you, or if you have the chance to not do it? And then slowly this awakening process starts, even in people, if you only talk to them. I had this a few times um, when I met people and when, this wisdom was kind of flowing out of me. It's uh, And this is exactly what happens on these weekends too. So I'm getting to the point that um, it's not only the psilocybin which makes our weekends so precious. I mean, there will be a future in 10, 20, 50 years maybe where we are doing psilocybin weekends without the psilocybin because it's all about the love that we come together uh, uh, Everyone, no one knows the other. It's um, it's used to be having people there not knowing the other, coming together out of love, not putting each other into position, just being together. And at the moment, the psilocybin is still necessary because um, out of the concept of love grows the real love through the mushrooms. It's when you are together. Uh, making strange noises from your body or uh, from laughter, uh, from just, you know, just being there. It's open so much up. It's kind of everyone is everyone is naked there. Mm -hmm. They're just stripped off there. They're put out their spacesuit of eagerness and is naked with the others. And then can see that there is no other, actually, that there is just love and That, uh, I mean, everyone is, on our, on our weekends, everyone is hugging and kissing the other, not in a sexual way, but, but hugging and kissing and smiling and laughing so much. Yes. All, those, all those things an ego tries to avoid. I mean, how, how less people are we hugging in our lives? I mean, okay, mom and dad, okay, our siblings, maybe our friends. Yeah, but hey, come on, I don't hug my neighbor. Who is my neighbor? I'm, I'm not hugging him, and so on and so on. And it's it's always you know we are reserving ourselves for a better time and saving uh, our love, you know. And and this is something you learn to overcome on those weekends too. It's just mm -hmm. give away, and this is all what comes additionally to the psilocybin to understand what is an ego, and very 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 important is if you want if you once awake and you see you have an ego almost everyone i know falls into the trap of i want to get rid of my ego yes and who and who wants to get rid of the ego 
the ego itself. Of course. It's all we we <laughs> talked about it before 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 we started the interview. The ego always tries to be better. A better man, a better this, a better that. It's always trying to improve life. And how and how mad is it to improve life? I mean, how, I know, only, wow, only the it's, ego can make that. It's, it's, okay, go on, improve life. You know, it's just and and this is this is something we realize on those weekends. And that I mean, the, the one I was speaking about earlier who let go of his anger, I mean, I can say his name is Niels, yeah? And Niels uh, learned also that, I mean, he got into this, ah, this damn ego thing. And I said, hey, Niels, take it easy. It's just the little Niels. I call it, I call my ego little Ollie, yeah? <laughs> and, and I, yeah, because it is the, you know, it's all the stuff that little Martin and little Ollie learned when he was zero to six. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you if you listen to Bruce Lipton's, uh, he's a maybe you know Bruce Lipton, he's a um, quantum uh, biologist or something. I don't know. It's all this uh, science talk, yeah. But he explains how information is processed in our cells, and that we are a community of cells of billions of cells, yeah. which are which are listening to the boss, our brain, our ego. <laughs> and if the if the brain says Heil Hitler, uh, or if the, if the brain is little Hitler and saying you know, it, jump off the cliff, the rest jumps, you know, and uh, that's what our ego is constantly doing, uh, doing things which are really not good for ourselves and for the rest of the community of selves, and, but still listening. And because this little guy in, uh, in, in our, our mind yeah, is little Ollie. It's uh, Ollie when he was six years old, Ollie when he was two years old and didn't get the love he, he, he wanted or he should have been given. And then we run around, oh, my parents were so bad and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, when I, when I uh, for the first time realized that my dad is just playing my dad and that there is no dad, you know, yeah. I came through him, or I came through my mom, but they are just acting like it. When I'm watching them now, there's pure love. I'm not blaming them anymore. I'm not hating. I hated my dad so much. I can't tell you. I can't put it in words how much I hated him. He was the most, I, was the person I hated the most. And you would never know, but now he's the person. You know, I could cry and cry and cry all the time when I'm beneath him because I love him so much. And this is all there is. It's only love. And hate is not hate. There is no opposite of love. It's just love being put down in yourself, being not letting flow by your mind. And that is what we call hate. And that can really destroy us because this energy is stuck in us. And then it grows into cancer and all this other stuff we have in our society. And this is something, I mean, explain this to a doctor, you know, actually, yeah, it's just, you know, you can't, it's, they would, they would tell you, yeah, come on, you're mad. And, and this is our society. It's all built on egos and it's all built on this. And, and that's why it's so beautiful that we can legally, legally have this, this um, mushroom back in our in our midst where it belongs in our society in our hearts where it belongs and I'm, I'm junk, jumping over here now I'm I love ayahuasca I have to say that I love ayahuasca I love DMT um, it's not that I'm against ayahuasca when I'm saying psilowasca viva psilowasca it's it's just that I believe that I as European as German that I believe that the mushroom is is our vehicle here and that we in europe before the church and um the uh, uh the spanish inquisition yeah ripped it out of our heart you know of our spiritual uh, european heart that before that time mushrooms were long 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 ages of ages of times uh the number one um sacrament in europe I mean, all over the place, there are Zemilan Seatas growing. If you look in, in books, in old books, it's always the little one with a nipple on top. It's always the little mushroom with the nipple on top. 
Semilands Theater. It's the magic mushroom per se in Germany and in Europe. And why are we importing uh, plants from the Amazon or the, the, the ready to drink brew, the ayahuasca brew from the, from the Amazon when we have the mushrooms growing here? I mean, okay, it's forbidden to, <laughs> yeah, it's forbidden to pick them, haha. Uh, they're illegal, yeah. But, you know, I'm not saying we are giving them away. We are using the loophole in the Dutch law and making it legal. But what is it? What it's all about is that mushrooms, hail the mushroom, get the mushroom back into society. And with the vehicle of the psilowaska, with the uh, addition of this peganum hamala seeds, which are, by the way, growing in Europe as well. They are growing in Turkey and in the European part, surely. <laughs> they are growing in Greece. Yeah, they are growing in, in, in Europe as well. It's a, it's a European plant as well. And it's it has a long tradition of uh, sacramental use, Peganum Hamala, Syrian rue it's called. Um, it's a very powerful plant. Three grams of those seeds and ta-da, you're there, Maui. You know, Maui, full Maui. And um, and this and the mushrooms, wow, you know, wow. Uh, you know, just, it's so powerful. And I have to warn everyone out there just not to do it alone. Not Do not underestimate the power of mushrooms and a Maui. And do it not alone. Uh, do it, start in a small dose. I, I wouldn't advise... For you at all to do it, it's just information here, uh, instead of just come to our ceremonies. They are open for everyone. And I've already uh, have the next one in January booked out, or fully booked, and March is opening now. And it's really, there's, yeah, I will be doing it uh, every two months now. We start with every three months. But uh, yeah, it's needed. And That's why I'm here, just to say, viva Psilwaska, <laughs> yeah. viva love. <laughs> so, so there's a number of things that you mentioned just there that I would like to touch on and, and yeah. comment on. And I guess the first is this idea that I, that I think really runs counter to what we see in a lot of spiritual circles is this idea of, well, I want to get rid of my ego, first of all. There <laughs> yeah. is this this notion that somehow you need to kill your ego. And when, when I hear people say that kind of my, my line that I use with people is then I ask them as well, do you think cutting off your hand would make you more enlightened? <laughs> and then everyone always says, well, no, of, of course not. You know, I, I need my hand. It does things for me. And then, so yeah. I ask them, well, why do you think that killing your ego is going to help you be more spiritual or more enlightened or, or, happier because it's it's fundamentally just a part of you and that's what i see is the real power of these ceremonies that you're talking about is that it gives you an opportunity to observe your ego and then also move out of your yes. ego and then also come yes. back into your ego so you can appreciate it that it's a part of you it doesn't need to be killed it just no, no. it's just made out of constructs that that we built when we didn't really know ourselves, that it's something that develops out of our childhood and develops out yes. of our sense of neediness or our sense of fear or our sense of isolation and separation. And so there's aspects of the ego that we can certainly heal. There's parts that we can reconfigure. There's parts that we can let go of, but it's not something that needs to be killed in any sense. And that that's a mm. fundamental spiritual illusion that many people have. And that also, What I think is very important here is the idea that when we are having those moments or those hours, perhaps with the Silawaska, of transcending the ego, what we're doing yeah. is we're uncovering our naturally existent self that is free and universal and unconditional love. And that that's not a yeah. spiritual achievement. It's actually just a revealing of what we already are. So here on the West yeah. Coast of the United States, something that's very popular in spiritual language is this idea that you need to ascend, you need to galactivate, you need to activate your DNA, you need to develop your psychic powers. So there's all these notions that ultimately 
are just playing into what we can call the spiritual ego, the ego that says, <laughs> I have these special abilities, or yeah. I've, I've ascended, or I've, I've killed my ego. But it's just another yeah. formulation of the ego. That, that there's nothing enlightened about yeah. that at all. Yeah. It's just yeah. a delusional yeah. behavior that people engage in. <laughs> And a lot of times it's reinforced by their participation in ceremony. And it's, it's reinforced yeah. by the, fetish, yeah. the fetishizing of ayahuasca and ayahuasca shamanism. The idea that, well, I'm going to drink ayahuasca and I'm going to activate all my DNA. And I'm going to do that mm -hmm. under the tutelage of a traditional shaman. That that's the ego operating. That's all mm -hmm. that's going on there. And so I really mm -hmm. love this emphasis that mm -hmm. you have on relaxing and letting go into our natural state of unity and pure love. And it's yeah. not something to be accomplished. It's not something for you to do. It's not something for you to achieve. It's something for you to just simply let go into. And that out of that yeah. is what allows us then to release the pain, release the fear, release the anger and get a more accurate perspective on ourselves just to use the language that you're using of these characters that we're playing as mother, father, husband, wife, daughter, son, you know, whatever, whatever role we're playing within our social network, it's just a, it's just an act. We're just characters doing that. And mm -hmm. underneath that we can rest within that universal unconditional love. And it is beautiful when mm -hmm. you see people do that because then they do want to hug and kiss each other. They want to connect <laughs> because those boundaries yes. that says I should do this or I shouldn't do that. I can do this. I can't do that. All that bullshit just falls away. And then people act mm -hmm. naturally on that unconditional love that is just yeah. the, the normal part of our being. And it, yeah. And in looking at it that way, it's not that it's some rarefied state. It's not some deep spiritual achievement. It's just being what we already are that we're busy pretending not to be through <laughs> these yeah. egos that we create for yeah, ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, it's apps. Yeah, my words, you know it, and and it's. I'm always talking about those things from my own experience. It's not that I I ate wisdom, or uh, it's not I'm right with this, or no. It's when when people say, "How can you be so sure?" I said, "I'm not sure. It's just what I'm experiencing." You know, if uh, if you would have seen me and my dad uh, five years ago, you would have said, "How dare you treating your dad?" If you see me now, oh wow, what a what a um, uh, what a relationship you have to your daddy, you know, and uh, and this is what what life is showing me. Just be conscious. Just see what happens. And the, the ego always say, "Ah, you could do better here. You could do better there." But it's just see what's happening. That's all. All you are is consciousness. And if you be conscious for your actings, then uh, everything comes into place. And if uh, and if the tiniest amount of I don't want this, I don't want that, you will see you get your you get your suffering, and yes. and that's what the mush that's what the mushrooms are doing. All they are doing is increase the suffering, accelerate the suffering process, and therefore and that's so beautiful with it. I mean, why did we we are the source, we are everything? Why did we invent DMT? I mean, sure. Uh, when I'm dreaming, it's DMT. Yeah, when I uh, when I was born, I can't remember that. Yeah, I guess it was DMT. When I will be, when I will die, it will be DMT. But every every night I'm seeing it. It's when I'm waking up from my dreams. Wow, did I smoke or what? Did I vape the DMT? No, it's it's a, it was a dream and it was so real, like doing this. And uh, but then the the mushrooms also the psilocin. Why is it there in the mushrooms? Uh, if not for us to take it, and if we are if we are allowed to take it, then what a beautiful gift we gave ourselves yes. to to accelerate the process of uh, suffering, so we can see what's really what really matters. And and the first time I got into that space, the God space, the whatever you want to label it with. Mm. The, the place where everything is just one, where you are one with everything, where there is no perception anymore, no thoughts anymore. It was so beautiful to see how my thoughts not were going away, but they, they were fading out. They were not like stop and then they were going away. They were fading out in my awareness. And suddenly they were gone. 
fade, fade it out. Uh, like a music player with the volume, you know, just whew, gone over. And then I was at the place where I was only energy, and even no energy there was. It was just what I'm labeling now with it. And I realized that that we are all the creation, and that out of an idea we created form. We we had the the like it's a play with. It's just oh, come on, let's do form. Yeah. And then the form, the form was created, and like everything has a um, this this circle of life and death, yeah, of form. The form is always coming slowly and going away slowly, and it's uh, it's in the big the big picture is the universe. Is I guess we are now uh, getting back, or isn't isn't aren't we? I, I'm not sure, but it's expanding. And going, going back uh, to the center, and everything in life does this as well. We, as little children, then we grow up, and then we go old, and we are like children again, and then we die and go back to the source where we came from as a baby. And um, this, this I, this is so beautiful. I, I'm not fearing death anymore. It's, mm -hmm. I had a strange, I had a strange dream two nights, now uh, two nights ago. I have to tell you, it was so beautiful. Um, I, I can't remember the circumstances, but there was someone who was pointing a gun at me. I mean, it's Germany here, there are no guns involved, yeah, usually. But there was someone pointing a gun at me and said, I will shoot you. He was suffering and he was told he didn't want to shoot me, but he couldn't but shoot me. And I said, come on then, let's kill, kill me. I love you so much. I can easily take your bullet. Mm, beautiful. And then, and then he's yeah, but he came up towards me, and then I realized he's really going to shoot me. <laughs> and I, I can, I swear, it's like feeling now, sitting here, I could feel that my ego came up with, but I don't want to die. And I had the strong feeling that I, at that point of my life. What I'm, uh, uh, where I'm now doing more things out of love uh, and not out of wanting anymore, where I'm giving freely and loving freely, I had the feeling, oh, come on. And I looked at him and said, oh, come on, let me just go on with it. And I immediately then realized consciously, all in the dream, yeah, that it is okay. I realized, hey, if life says, I have to go now. Well, then I go. What? You know, going home. It's okay. Let's go home. Yeah. And then, and it was so strange, man. I can, he shoot at me. And I, I could feel in that dream the bullet entering my brain and my, my, um, yeah, myself, yeah, the real myself going out of the body. And then I woke up. <laughs> wow. And I was really, that's what I said. Uh, I was sitting there and thinking, man, that's why I'm not smoking DMT the past weeks or the past months, actually. I'm really, uh, my ego is a bit scared of sacraments. And it's, uh, that's why it's so interesting that I'm sitting there with, uh, on the Pseudowaska weekends, not taking something, uh, anything myself. But just sitting there with the others, and it's so beautiful because I'm, I just do not have, uh, yeah, visions, yeah. But I'm at the same place where the others all are. We are resonating on the same frequency all together. And I mean, I I did smoke uh, two weeks ago or so, so just to check myself if I still can do it, give up on par on on the moment. But um, yeah. It, it's my ego is kind of uh, scared by it. And that's uh, going back to what you said. You just have to love yourself too. It's not that only love others. It's love yourself. Yeah. Love little Ollie. Love little Martin. Love the little me. It's just a little, little boy in my case. It's just, you know, I have a story where my mom and my dad had to leave me at the hospital when I was eight months old. For two weeks, two weeks for an eight-month-old eight baby is eternity. You know, it's endless. 
And I, I, I'm pretty sure I was suffering intensely and then somehow was going along with it, but had since that point the strong feeling that I am not loved. And this is the imprint I got with eight months. Mm-hmm. And, and they weren't forbidden to get in, 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 the hospi- uh, in, the, in the room where the kids were. And my mom told me. Uh, actually, my mom told my wife and my wife told me. And um, I then asked my mom, but this is my story, for example. And everyone has a story, maybe not a trauma, but a story from the childhood. Six years is a long time, especially uh, it's the, the first two years. But six years, the childhood, I see I have children. My, my boy is seven. And I can easily see how his ego is now acting different than a year ago mm-hmm. and, or two years ago. And um, I'm teaching them love for the past three years till I wo- uh, since I woke up. But, uh, yeah, I, I did uh, the years before when I was watching videos, family videos, you know, I can see me acting out maniac, you know, like I could, I could feel how I was getting angry, you know. <laughs> and I, I'm not getting angry anymore. And um, funny thing is, the more you, can, you say that, you're getting angry again. But, you know, it's really... Um, I'm pretty much going along with things now. Uh, I still have to love myself more, you know, but um, it's all right. It's yeah. <laughs> I, th- I just think that's such an important perspective on all of this that, yeah. in order to really love other versions of ourselves, whether it be our kids, our lovers, our our spouses, our parents, or anyone yeah. else, that it really is about our ability to love ourselves and in a sense to embrace our own death our own dissolution and then find our love and trust within that you know when we're working with the medicines that the more we can allow ourselves to go through this experience and say well it's okay if i die as this happens and then to just dip down into that well of infinite love and kind of bathe in that for a while and then come back out and be able to say well look I'm going to treat my children with love because I love myself. It's not that I'm trying to be a good parent or that I'm following some program or that I have some spiritual guidance that I need to do this, that, or the other thing. It just becomes a natural outgrowth of our own sense of self-love, our sense of trust and our willingness to be with ourselves through all of our vicissitudes of, of contracting and expanding and all the rest that they're just a reflection of ourselves and that by finding our own inner clarity and our own inner peace, which again is not achieving anything. It's just revealing what's already there. That's what makes it ultimately easier for us to be better parents, to be better lovers, to be whatever it is that we are, that that grounding within that infinite well of ourselves naturally expresses itself in more harmonious and loving relationships. And it makes life better for everyone. Yeah. Absolutely, it's um, it's uh, it's all about love, really. It's um, uh, love is the. I mean, there's the other words are God, energy, isness, emptiness, whatever. It's all words, but love is the word which suits best in in my in my heart, you know, and from from my it's love. <laughs> and um, as as much as we let this love in. Um, the more um, the love lets us in and the more we are with life and not against it. And um, this is, um, I mean, this, uh, when you take the suffering of the planet and of everything, um, there's, I mean, we are really pushing it to the limit, humanity altogether. Yes. But, um, but still, you know, that's like Maharaji, the guru from Ramna said, can't you see it's all perfect? Um, all there is, is like it is. And um, there are things we can do, and there are things we can't change, and we, we shouldn't change. It's not about improving life. It's just about stopping to, to not let life um, um, uh, uh, rush through us to to stop to let the love uh, to, um, uh, to keep the love 
inside ourselves. It's just smile at someone, uh, smile at to ev uh, towards everyone. You know, when I'm, when you're on the street, when you're in a supermarket, greet everyone, say hello, just. Oh, you look great. Or maybe it's too much, you know, <laughs> but just say hello and smile. And you all, you always will be smiled back at. It's everyone is just waiting for the other one to make the first step. Mm -hmm. It's when, yeah, when two humans meet each other, it's the, the one waits for the other to make the first step. And, um, yeah, and since we are no, since we, since we know that love is all that takes, we can make the first step. And in this, on this way, we can free others or we can help others see what's really important or just share love. And this is the brick in the dark window, you know, one little brick. And, but this little brick can't be washed away anymore. It will be always there, the brick, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is what's happening at the moment. I'm, yeah, I'm really, really optimistic that um, the experiment human being is not at an end and that we will manage it to not being, um, to not die out like the dinosaurs did, but to uh, maybe survive and finally open up to our true selves and realize that there were always the the Garden of Eden around us, and we just uh, closed our eyes, you know. And I mean, there is so many, so many um, of of all this is in every religion, in every everywhere, you know. It's just the the, the people are following in their mind and had and have forgotten what the what the real information is. And um, yeah, actually, it's all love. And uh, we, we, we only have to share this. And we should be grateful um, that there are those little mushrooms and the vine and whatever. You know, as, I mean, I, I take it down to DMT. It's psilocin, DMT. It's, those are the, 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 um, the main keys to unlock the real self in us. And um, um, we're really, we should be really grateful to have this shot the short path, you know, to, to, um, to, uh, uh, yeah, that the suffering gets so intense that we are, um, accelerate the process of waking up and yeah. Yes. Well, let's, yeah. let's talk <laughs> practicalities, uh, yeah. for a moment here. We've almost been talking for an hour. So, yeah. but I thought we could do to kind of wrap things up and I also just want to yeah. say it's really been a wonderful conversation. I've really, yeah, thank Very you. Very much thank enjoyed you. hearing all of your yeah. thoughts and feelings on all of this. It's really quite wonderful. But I'd like to now direct people now to your website of Silawaska.com. Yes. And it's yeah. P S I L O H U A S C A dot yes. com. Silawaska.com. Yes, well. yeah. And uh, maybe if you could just talk a little bit about how people can go about participating in Silawaska sessions and a little bit more of what they could expect from the actual session itself. So you say that it lasts for, you know, around nine hours, but uh, what does that entail? If someone wanted yeah. to participate, <laughs> what could they expect? Yeah. And then how could they go about getting in touch with you to make this happen for themselves? Yeah. Thank you very much for giving me a direction. <laughs> I was just asking myself, ah, I, you know, I was getting in the mood of just hugging you. <laughs> <laughs> through Skype, you know. <laughs> and, yes, okay. I, <laughs> yeah, um, on the Psilowaska page, uh, I invite everyone to just read it. You know, there's lots of information there too and some beautiful links to uh, YouTube uh, videos of te teachers in marks, you know, um, spiritual teachers and a bit about my story, uh, uh, which I haven't told here. But um, yes, uh, there is a, a form on the ceremony page it's called yeah the ceremony page where you can just send me an email and then um you're in <laughs> you know just send an email i have interests uh, from even from america it, although it's a bit difficult to fly over here easily but we have participants from england from switzerland from germany from uh, the netherlands uh, from belgium and oh no, the Belgium guy didn't come, but okay, yeah, we have interest from everywhere. Uh, che from from Czechoslovakia, two guys are coming for January, 
So, um, yeah, we are open for everyone. And uh, with the email, you get in touch with me. And as you will see, I'm a houseman. I have a bit of a time to write an email here or there. And so I'm really getting in touch already before the ceremony with you, um, uh, telling you um, how it's going to be and asking you what you are expecting. So getting a bit in touch, you know. So I, so we both have a picture a bit of the other well, before coming to the ceremony. Um, then... Um, uh, there will be a, um, a PDF uh, with all the information where the location is. And there is a little fee, a little donation fee uh, you have to pay. It's not for the Psiloaska, but it's for the food and for the place I rent in, in the Netherlands. And we are about to uh, have a different place than we were before. Not because it was bad, but we want to change the localities now and we are moving further and maybe in summer we go to the beach to Zeeland, uh, west coast of uh, Netherlands there yeah just to change the venue and so um, then you uh, then I will ask you to pay at least half of uh, what is about what is to pay before so you're then uh, fully uh, so, so, so you then book the whole thing and when you come on the ceremony on a Friday 17 we start um there will be already i will be i will be having finished cooking and there will be uh not warm food but all kinds of food on the table and salads and stuff and i always take care that um uh, i love to say the term that we celebrate life you know Psiloaska, I, I have to tell that it's it's not about ceremony i mean it's a ceremony because we're all together no one gets out we stayed together and we are a family going on that journey. But uh, there are no rules involved. The only rule I have now is no drugs. We had a bit of pot smoking last time and that makes the ego even more mad than it's already. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I can tell you. Uh, so we kicked that one out. It wasn't a problem because everyone was still loving the guy who had too much weed, but um, it was a kind of, uh, it was a bit of, uh, uh, yeah, next time, not better not. <laughs> and this is a beautiful thing because, you know, uh, life is not silent. Life is not um correct or life is not rules yeah life is life you know if you have to fart you fart you know you're a human being if you have to to scream for a moment then scream and this is all about it the psilowaska to take each other as he or she is which is really important because many approaches on the ayahuasca ceremonies are silence and this and that uh, rule and so on yeah. I mean, I mean, you're still allowed to throw up deadly, yeah, like, ah, you know, uh, I was at a ceremony. The, one hour into the ceremony, people were starting to make the strangest noises, but just purging. Um, but it's all okay, you know. It's, it, I still love them, but, you know, this is something still it was not okay that I was humming a bit with the Icaros. Right. So everyone was and everyone was shushing me like shh, you know. <laughs> so, well, but it is okay. In our ceremonies, we play music. It doesn't mean we play music from the beginning. I mean, there will be Brian Eno ambient music. I don't know if you know him, yes. but uh, it's he's the king of ambient. He invented it, and it's such. It's no melody involved, and that's the important thing. The music is only there to reassure you that there is a now that there is a uh, the form is there you know kind of i mean Selaska is so strong you can't even see the room anymore so it's quite good that you hear some music and this is uh, brian eno then for four hours or so and the past two ceremonies it was that um, at that point everyone is coming back slowly and then it's so beautiful to have some moving music, like last time we played Michael Jackson, which was so beautiful. Why? Do you believe how beautiful this? Ah, he's so gorgeous. And everyone was loving him as well and plays now Michael Jackson. <laughs> and, you know, it's, yeah, but it, it came to me kind of out of the situation. We had a bit of a trouble with the guy with the weed and with uh, one or two others. And so uh, it was good to have uh, something loving overlaying the noise, you know. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, but this is psilowaska, you know. Um, if you want to have a strict egoic ceremony, bad bad choice, you know, bad bad place to go. Psilowaska. Psilowaska is all about. Um, I, I said to my friend, we should change the label. It's psilowaska.com, just human. You know, <laughs> we are, uh, are nice. only human nice. because we are humans. I mean, we are we are in this human body. And we are most of the time suffering because we don't like this or don't like that or uh, want it different than this. And you know what I mean. And But but just say, hey, this is it. And I am this. And I'm human. And I love to be human. When I came back uh, from many times smoking DMT or from the night with the Psilowaska when it was so strong, I, I just realized, hey, cool. I can ha I have some years more of that. Yeah. And be, and before up to that up to that point, I was thinking, oh, why don't I kill myself? You know, I, okay, I had three kids, but I still was kind of oh, I'm sick of the shit. And um, I, I mean, I even tried to kill myself when I was 18, so I was always kind of a depressive, uh, you know, ego uh, carrying around. And yeah, but I mean, life is so beautiful and it's so great and. Yeah, and back to the topic, uh, we are celebrating life on this weekend. And it's so beautiful because we have Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday at 17, it is uh, finished. Uh, I give back the house and everyone is um, moving back at home. And um, on set, uh, so we have Friday night, we have a come together of everyone and uh, chatting and hugging and loving and um, s uh, some people have a bit of um, last time we had a guy who brought Yopo seeds or Yopo snuff mm -hmm. which was intense for the one or the other and we have Mapacho tobacco I had had a guy had, uh, he made a tincture of it and so um, Friday is already very intense exchanging stories getting close and building up a family feeling and on Saturday we are um Still, you know, it's sleep, sleep until you uh, as long as you wish, and then uh, have a last eat for the day around 12 or uh, between 12 and 2. You know, last uh, the last food is uh, is taken in because you have to be uh, at least six hours before the Maui should, sh shouldn't eat anything. I mean, it's always be, de be careful with the Maui, it's dangerous, blah blah blah. That is. Uh, that is right if you have a uh, Maui, an antidepressant, you know, if you have a chemically Maui, um, those Mauis are um, uh, not temporarily, but full Maui inhibiting. Mm -hmm. uh, Peganum is only temporarily, meaning six hours, meaning four to six hours, and it's 50% uh, only. There is this beautiful picture with the cats, you, uh, maybe you heard of it. Um, if you have kittens yeah and they're uh how was it a, a kitten hunts for a uh, hundred mice or so and since it's a kitten it plays around with 50 or so and if you have an adult cat it hunts down all the the mice so you already still have 50 percent of your maui of your mao intact if you have peganum in you so you can even eat a banana which is deadly poisonous on the Maui, but it's totally crap. It's, <laughs> I mean, I, I tried it. It's, you get a bit of a grumbling stomach or so, but um, still it's good to have an empty stomach before any sacrament to ingest. So at two o'clock, the last um, light food is taken in. And at um, 19 or, yeah, last time it was 19, I mean, it's all lightly. If you can't do it by 19, then we go by 20. It's you. You see, it's life. Life says what is right, what is appropriate, and then we take the Maui. Only the plain seeds. They are crushed down, but we just wash them uh, down with a bit of water. It's there is no extract made. There is. It's all natural. Just mm -hmm. the plain seeds. They are a bit bitter, but um, it's part of the experience to get them down and yeah 99 percent have no problems with it it's just wash them down with a bit of water 
and we have this special water around on my homepage is more about that. And so uh, an hour later, the Mao is fully inhibited or 50% inhibited like the Piganum does. And if you take then the mushroom, we will, um, the mushroom material uh, in a cup of tea and I let it soak in, it, in a cup of tea a bit and then you wash down the, the mushrooms an hour later and since it's in the tea already, it's um, coming very, very fast. It, uh, it's after 10 minutes, you already can sense, wow, there is something happening yeah. here. And half an hour, 40, 50 minutes, uh, and everyone is gone already. And um, if not, then the ego is too strong. We have that. And I will start my work to just sit with the one and take care of him or her and um yeah it's in in the in the experience we already had and in my own experiences it's this state of consciousness goes on for three to four hours and then slowly one is coming uh, the, the few of them are coming back and then the running around starts the wow what does this look like starts the i have to go peeing wow i'm falling into the toilet the toilet is watching me and stuff starts and and then the first giggling starts too mm -hmm. it's it's all this one one of us starts giggling and this is so beautiful with mushrooms in my experience it's the difference between ayahuasca and psilocybin we didn't talk about that it's um mushrooms always have a feeling of someone else there is an entity in you kind of it's i mean it's not an entity but there is the feeling of the mushroom is with you i let's let's put it in this uh, like this you know the the mushroom is with you kind of it feels like this and um also the mushrooms make you more giggle um i mean we had a good laugh on ayahuasca too it's not this but it's a bit more it's more giggling mm -hmm. <laughs> even and and then the laughing starts and the loving starts too and uh, the first ceremony in the fifth hour everyone was lying on the other hugging and touching the other it looked like uh, i mean with clothes on i have to say that again again and again there's no sexual stuff involved yeah but it looked like a swinger club you know <laughs> and, and, but, but it's so beautiful because no one no ego allows this you know this is something exactly something which no ego allows and if you're doing that you're already healed instantly healed if someone touches you who who, bar who you barely knew and uh, no who you just got in touch two days ago with or a day ago with and you let them or him or her touch you you're healed already <laughs> it's as simple as that and yeah what should i say more on sunday i cook again warm meal then we sit all together have a lunch and then slowly open up. It's not even that uh, everyone is pushed to talk about, to put in words what he or she experienced. And this is so beautiful because I don't have to worry about those things. A, everyone is talking to the other like family. So it's not I go to everyone and ask. Uh, but I see, ah, he is talking with her and her is talking with her. I see them all talking together. So, you know, words are exchanged about what happened. And then I talk with uh, these and this, and they tell me the story of the other. And overall, I get all stories. Right. Yeah. And and if not, then I going on Facebook, and we're still in contact. And I'm doing my my work after the ceremony, asking how is how you are um, doing with your change at work now. How is it with your family situation? Because we're family, we're caring for each other. And. Um, yeah, it's if you go to the Psilowaska, um, yeah, let's call it forum or community on Facebook, you can easily see what pictures are shared and what the stories are shared. I mean, um, if someone wants to go there, I have to let them in, but um, I have the strong trust that uh, it's all okay to do it that way. And I mean, it's not illegal, that's for sure. So I'm freely acting on this it's yes. not illegal it's legal healing and um, yeah <laughs>
Well, that said, <laughs> just just wonderful, Ollie. I've I've really enjoyed yeah. having you on the podcast for today, yeah, and, and having you, 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 you share yeah. all of this wonderful information. Yeah. And it's it's really been a great delight. And um, I think mm-hmm. that your your joy is contagious. Your enthusiasm is contagious, yeah. and it's just <laughs> beautiful to be able to share that with the podcast listening audience. And just yeah. congratulations uh, on your own personal yeah. work and for the work that you're doing yeah. to help others to discover this within themselves because that's what we really need more of. And so beautiful. Yeah, yeah thank you very much for having me. I can't put in words how I know. Um, I mean, we have switched off the the camera. Um, uh, you have to see me. I'm just so so deeply smiling, you know. I'm I'm feeling like I'm fully on the sacrament now. And that's what I was talking about. It's it's always there. Yes. And I, I heard you saying that on your podcast too. It's always there. You don't need the sacraments. But to for, find it out, the sacraments help you. And if you found it out, then life teaches you the rest. It's wow, you know, it's so beautiful to share all this. And and this is real love. This is I, I go there not asking something in return. I'm standing there cooking and doing and hugging and ke- keeping an eye on everyone and doing, and I'm really exhausted afterwards, uh, lovely exhausted, but um, it's I'm doing this out of pure, unconditional love, and, and love, uh, and, and life loves me back for it so deeply. It's so, wow, you know? <laughs> And um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for having me. <laughs> yes, well, well, thank you, Ollie. And let's let's leave it with a big, unconditional, universal wow. That sounds good to wow. me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. And um, yeah, uh, the same wow to everyone out there. Thank you for listening to us. It, yes. is a pl- it was a pleasure. It is a pleasure. And Siloaska, viva Siloaska. <laughs>